first principles and, and try and pick up on the point that, that uh, Chris left us with. And I'm going to move away from conventions, uh, particularly, and I want to uh, go back to first principles and processes of archaeological heritage management and think about the relationship between archaeological heritage management and public participation and engagement in the context of the shift to new paradigms for cultural and heritage. Because actually I think that's more important than pieces of paper with articles on them. Uh, so I'm going to make no apologies for literally going back to first principles. Archaeological heritage management is about defining significance at a particular point in time and making choices to manage change. And that requires multiple value judgments to reconcile different or conflicting priorities at each and every point in the management cycle. There is no shortage, as we've seen, of international instruments and guidelines to help us try and do this. But their main focus is on the different mechanisms available to us as professional archaeologists and heritage managers to preserve, conserve, manage and present archaeological sites. Uh, the Lausanne Charter, for example, requires the cooperation of the general public, uh, whatever that means, and the need for active participation, whatever that means. But its focus is still on management as an expert process. And it doesn't actually help in any meaningful way in telling us how it thinks we ought to achieve active public participation in management. And similarly, the, the Valletta Convention sets out the need to raise public awareness and to promote public access. And we all know and we can celebrate all the successes of the Valletta Convention over the last 25 years. But more often than not, that public access and public promotion is a one-way process. It's us educating the public in our scientific and professional values. Usually failing to do that, but that's what we try to do. Rather than understanding and even incorporating public values into our own professional discourses. Preservation in situ, which underpins quite a lot of that heritage management wonky stuff, uh, has been the core principle of archaeological heritage management for many years. But as Dear Willem so forcefully pointed out, I'm not going to use his rather blue language about this, I'd better not, I get in trouble. Uh, actually, Preservation in situ favours simplistic management and it hampers innovative approaches. And the concept is being abandoned already in a lot of quarters in favour of a more nuanced and context-oriented uh, approach that balances the requirements of all the different drivers and all the different stakeholders. Uh, which, and that approach is built on an understanding of all the scientific, economic, social and public values at play in each place at each point in the decision making process. In recent years many cultural institutions have placed a much greater focus on the human rights and democracy. Leonid has taken us through this as key elements of the heritage equation. And the Florence and Faro conventions both place great emphasis on the importance of social and cultural aspects of heritage. And to a certain extent, this reflects the ever-increasing social pressures on us as archaeologists over recent years, which have all resulted in changing social expectations of heritage and a thirst for real public participation and engagement in heritage activities. The Council of Europe has this year launched uh, a cultural, European cultural heritage strategy for the 21st century. Uh, and this gives a very welcome recognition, not only of the importance of public participation, but also the need to develop practical mechanisms to empower public participation in heritage governance. Scary concept. But like many other similar instruments, it is high level and aspirational, and still gives too much emphasis to one-way promotion of heritage. The language of archaeological heritage management, as exemplified by recent instruments and strategies, is therefore beginning to reflect some of those broader social and public values. But, but this alone is not enough, and the, the cultural paradigm, as recently summarised by Pierre-Luigi Sacco, is changing and evolving to one that is characterised 
by open communities of practice organised on networks where the distinction between producers and users and content uh, is co-created. This is the cultural paradigm, uh, and we all recognise that in the digital era that we live in. And it is easily possible to read that trajectory straight across to the heritage world and, and perceive a heritage, a new heritage paradigm. In simplistic terms, this marks the shift from a heritage dominated by us, experts, uh, to a heritage where, and, and where, of which preservation and conservation is the priority, to one where entertainment and market forces are the dominant concerns, Time Team and BBC or whatever, however you want to look at it, to a situation that we're partly in but is coming at us head on, where everyone is involved in the production, circulation and conservation of heritage, so that heritage is made, preserved and enjoyed by the whole community. Of course, these stages are not mutually exclusive, and we would all recognise different elements of each of those paradigms in the same organisation at the same time that we exist now. But I would suggest that across much of Europe and the world, the heritage paradigm is much more firmly rooted currently in the conservation and entertainment stages set out here, and that heritage as, as, as community, real community, has yet to gain any significant traction, despite the high aspirations and many examples of good practice. The economic drivers of the late 20th century are being supplemented by new drivers built on a more social concept of heritage embedded in a much wider range of values. And, and to overcome these problems, this requires much more than what we think we're good at, which is communication. It requires genuine, respectful, two-way discussion that actually leads to public participation, engagement and partnership. The Salala recommendations for heritage management, quite rightly, are all firmly rooted in concepts of scientific integrity, authenticity and conservation. And they also give space to recognise the importance of engaging meaningfully with public and social realms. And the draft Salala guidelines uh, reflect that as well, but they are, in my opinion, also too firmly rooted in conventional archaeological heritage management processes. And they still feel, to me, too one way. The importance of society in the archaeological heritage management cycle has long been recognised. I stole this side from Willem, and he, he first drew it up in 1997. But my belief is that the, c the communication is still usually one way. We talk out at society. We do not sufficiently listen to what society tells us coming back in to our world. And we don't pay enough attention to that engagement. Awareness raising simply isn't enough. Just because we've got good stories, we think telling those stories raises awareness. And awareness raising does not translate into public and political support. If it did, we'd all be, all our organisations would be significantly better off today than they actually are. It does work in very specific and local contexts where archaeology and preservation and conservation becomes a sort of cause celebre. And I think it is a mistake for us to underestimate the potential social values of buried archaeology and to relegate archaeological sites just to being sources of information. Understanding how landscapes have been used and occupied by previous generations is a critical element in the emotional relationship that people build with place, regardless about whether they know about individual sites or not. The social values and social significance attached to place and the meaning and understanding of place to people, whether they're local people or new incomers, uh, extends far beyond, if you like, the striking, the exceptional, the significant, the national iconic places. And if we ignore those factors as a discipline, we do so at our own peril. We are beginning to exploit a wide range of new opportunities for heritage management, using that values-led approach to underpin and improve more effective conservation management. And we're beginning to develop heritage management practices and policies that are relevant to society at large. 
But a critical issue is how to articulate our needs and concerns about the past with the concerns and needs of the public when we hardly understand how the public engages with the past, we don't know what it wants from that past, or from that matter what the public want from us. If we are to tap into that most elusive zeitgeist without relinquishing our core scientific professional values, we must at least engage in a real two-way discourse with the public, accepting and celebrating their role as co-creators and co-owners of the past, albeit a past that is different to and has different values to the one that we're used to. That goes far beyond imposing our values on the public, telling them or persuading them what to think and value about the past, and far beyond simply entertaining them through our exciting or not stories. It will require us to re-examine our own values, the entire basis on which we function, and do our work, and, the ter and, and we have to re-examine the terms by which we do that work. We need to blend the best of existing heritage management practice with mechanisms for meaningful public engagement to create real partnerships. And those partnerships can share in the creation, circulation, enjoyment, and understanding of the heritage. If we can't achieve this, we condemn ourselves to occupying an increasingly irrelevant professional cul-de-sac of no interest to anyone but ourselves. If we can avoid this evolutionary dead end and engage with the public successfully as real partners, we will need to bring to the table a view of the past that is not only inspiring and compelling, but that is genuinely, openly and accessible and that integrates archaeological heritage management in the social dimension of public life. And I suppose my thesis is, this is what we need to do. I don't care whether we have a global convention or not. I agree with everyone else. We've got all the techie stuff. Let's get on and do the real job. Thank you.